welcome back. And we're moving into our final segment for today. Keeping in theme with our resolution week and uh, focusing on something that maybe we don't think about that often. And that is your personal brand. We have with us the president and lead trainer of the Institute of Professional Development, Paul Leckie. Good morning and welcome. Good Thank morning. Thank you for being here. Good, Good morning, morning, Mr. Thank Leckie. You. Thank you. It's Let's a begin to be here. by talking about the idea of branding one's self uh, within the professional environment. Good. Well, the important thing is that branding is synonymous with your with your reputation mm -hmm. right? and hence we need to take it seriously when someone hear your name what do they think about because people know your brand that care about your name what is it that you're up to what are you doing now what do you have to offer mm -hmm. so branding is extremely important now the thing with branding is that like we said earlier some of us don't consider it. Yeah. We, are, we are always sending messages mm -hmm. about who we are. Right? And I, I want to start there because in a small society like Belize, um, we don't talk about personal branding or marketing ourselves so often. Uh, we rely on the networking of who I know and who knows me and who knows my fa family to be able to get job opportunities, to be able to move ahead and advance professionally. How do you talk to Belizeans about being able to understand uh, that what you represent and how the outside public views you is important in getting more opportunities? Uh, well, the first thing I would say is, you know, we live in the technological age mm -hmm. and social media is a big thing. Everybody's on social media these days, or nearly everybody. Now, what has been happening recently, and we don't realize it, yeah. is that in Belize, employers are going to social media mm -hmm. to look for prospective employees. Mm -hmm. So what you put out online is extremely important. So you need to audit your online. Yeah. What is it that you are sharing with people? I've known people who lost their jobs because of what they have on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so what are you putting out there? What are you tweeting? Yeah. Now many claim that is my personal private space. I am entitled to my opinion and views and thoughts on whatever issue I'm speaking about. And I hear this very often. Um, while there are privacy settings, um, how do you talk about it seems that like an area where you have to break through many different uh, reasons and justifications. How do you normally communicate this message to people? Well, what you try to tell people is, one, once you go on the social media, you're telling just a few millions of your closest friends. <laughs> right? You do not know where your life will take you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have to be very careful what is it that you're sending, what is the message you're sending. Yeah. And so you have to be very conscious about what message you want to send. What do you want people to think about you professionally? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is extremely important because sometimes we go for a job interview, we have an excellent interview and we think, boy, we're going to get this job. But then somebody's going to check you on Google. Mm -hmm. They're going to check yeah. Facebook and LinkedIn and so forth. They're going to be looking at what your friends are saying. Mm -hmm. They're going to be looking at what you're saying. And then you get a letter, well, thanks. I've always found it amazing that you'd have people who have amassed a professional background, their experiences, their academic knowledge, and all of these things. And they spend so much time online blogging, uh, engage, engaging in, in exchanges with other people over whatever issues there may be out there. And not for a second, sit back and think, you know what? I wonder if I'm sending the proper message out there based on being opinionated in light of the fact that there are other people who may be looking at me who may find me either employable or unemployable based on the things that I'm sharing. That's right. And so it's so important. Eh? You know, Qualification is one thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
but people are looking at who you are. Mm -hmm. What do you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. right? What message are you sending? You don't want to be employing somebody who's always negative, mm -hmm. somebody who's tearing down people. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be employing somebody who's mixing with the wrong crowd, for mm -hmm. example. Or complains every day. Or complain every day. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And we know that some people are happy being miserable. Mm -hmm. So they complain about everything. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be employing that person. Now, what is the balance when it comes to marketing yourself? Because on the flip side, it is a disaster if you are somebody who has no online presence. In other words, is now, this a th there's a question. There it is. <laughs> the question is, if I am somebody who applies for a job in mm -hmm. Belize, outside of Belize, mm -hmm. I will be Googled. Will. I will be searched for on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I can either give myself a competitive edge or completely discredit right. myself. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you move to the other end of the spectrum? Obviously, anything negative. And we had conversations about this before, and people have spoken about the legalities of using this information. But if an HR person does this search, mm -hmm. and they cannot use it as a justification, the thoughts of you doing whatever they see on Facebook will remain in their mind. Exactly. And they'll find ways to yes. use it. And if you have zero presence, then you are pretty much just the paper that you've presented. That's right. So to strike the balance, really, we have to embrace the technology. We have to embrace social media. The key thing is, what are you sending out? Each time you upload something on your Facebook page, what message are you sending? When you put a picture out there, what message are you sending? What kind of picture are you sending out? So we need to make sure that we use it, monitor it carefully to send the right message. On the other hand, how we live our lives, I mean, we, give free, we have given a choice. Eh? Mm -hmm. Life is a choice. Everything you do is a choice. How do you present yourself? Um, for example, in Belize, we're a small society. Words get around. Mm -hmm. To brand yourself, you must take every opportunity to present yourself out there in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Public speaking is one thing you need to learn. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you present yourself? How do you dress? Mm -hmm. You must dress to suit your industry. Yes? Now, a lot of time we don't care too much about how we dress. This is important. When I dress to suit my industry, I'm sending a message. One, I need to be taken seriously as a professional. I'm sending a message that I value you. Therefore, I must dress to impress you because I value what you think about me. Because your personal brand really is the perception people have about you. What are they thinking? What are they saying about you? I'd say I need to make sure the balance, using technology, making sure that you are visible, the other problem we have, we have some brilliant people in this country, mm -hmm. but they are passive. Mm -hmm. They will not speak up. You're in a meeting mm -hmm. and you zip up. Mm -hmm. They keep all the ideas to themselves. All the ideas to themselves. You, we have to become assertive. We must speak up so people know who we are, what we're thinking. That's yeah. how you present yourself. A lot of passive people who are brilliant get walked over. And I, I love that you speak about that because there is such, a, and there's studies now that show this, and I, and I love that it can be validated. It is so often when we, when we take the middle ground and try to be so safe. safe that you are often unrecognized for the value and worth that you bring, and you're also given less opportunities. In other words, people want to know that you have passion and that you are willing to stand out. There's, there's a, a, a issue with perhaps scarcity, I think, that, that if you are unique in your own brand, then you are more valuable. Yes. How do you get that? that? And how do you overcome, in a, in a country like Belize, where you are crucified for having an opinion about or everything. to be different. Yeah. Yes. Well, there come a point when, when you know you're doing the right thing, mm -hmm. we have to stop thinking about what other people are thinking. Mm -hmm. What people think about you is none of your business. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So we need to make sure we're doing the right thing. My thing is that you need a positive mental attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need a positive belief system. And you need a strong dose of spirituality. Mm -hmm. right? And if you combine those, because 
in other words, the spirituality will help you to stay on the right track. Make sure that whatever you're doing is ethical. Mm -hmm. right? And it doesn't matter where you're coming from, but if you can embody that, people don't want to be around people who are negative. Mm -hmm. And if you're always complaining, people avoid you. Yeah. When you're positive, people want to be around you. Right. Yes? So you have to be sent that. And the good news is that it only takes 21 days mm -hmm. to change a habit or to create yeah. a habit. Yeah. Right? So you can become positive in 21 days. Let's look at this. When you look at the overall working environment or the professional environment in Belize, for instance, you find that there's a mix between the professional and the casual. But there seems to be more casual than there is professional. I think that, that lends to the way people carry themselves, the way they dress, yes. the way they, they, the attitudes, the way they act on the work site, and what have you. And then when you look at those who carry themselves professionally, they take themselves and their jobs seriously, and others seriously. The society looks at them as, as like being anomalous because they stand out in a sense. Yes, but you know the thing is that that is changing, fortunately. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go back to this dress down thing on Friday, mm -hmm. that was starting in the United States, and now the research has shown that when people dress down, they are least productive. Okay. So corporations are telling their staff, dress as if you work on Wall Street on a mm -hmm. Friday. Because the way we dress determines how we present ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, when you dress up nicely, you're not going to go and sit on the sidewalk. If you have on jeans, you'll sit on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. So our dress has a lot to do with it. And if we dress casually, we're going to take our work casually mm -hmm. as well. You know, I think definitely that's something that, that uh, has to be embraced. And you are, I can recall having conversation with bankers who said, it, the most important person, uh, what well, not most important, but when you go to your teller, if your teller doesn't look like they can handle your money, you're going to be skeptical. Exactly. Um, and so even their dress and how they, how they represent themselves is important. Now, in Belize's society, this is really something I think we're, we're kind of playing catch up on. Um, what do you find are some of the major uh, errors that Belizeans make in how they represent themselves professionally. And we're speaking about the professional uh, opportunities that you may be going after. Well, I think one, firstly, is how a lot of our professionals dress. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank God, like I said, it's changing. But how we dress, because there's a 7-Eleven rule. When I meet you for the first time, in the first seven seconds, I've already formed 11 opinions of you. Mm -hmm. And the opinion is going to be based on my experience, my exposure. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I, do I want to do business with you or not. Mm -hmm. yes? So how we present ourselves as professional. And so I say you have to dress based on your industry. Yeah. I don't expect an auto mechanic to be coming to, shirt in, coming to work in tie and white shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? But you must dress so people can take you serious. Accordingly. According, yes. If I'm a tour guide or a, uh, somebody who's taking you on a trail and I have the proper gear, mm -hmm. which will include hiking boots and proper pants, That's right. they'll be taken more professionally. Exactly. It, gives, it gives the impression that you know what you're what doing you're and doing. what you're there for. It does. Right? Okay. People are going to take you for the image you present. Yeah. Okay. We have to remember that we're always speaking, we're always sending messages. The way we walk, the way we stand, the way we sit, the way we Gosh. eat. We are sending message. So we have to be conscious of what message do I want to send. People said to me at times, well, it's a free world. Of course, it's a free world. You have choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But with freedom come responsibility. Yeah. Yes? And this is part of the reason that I keep on saying in the conversation that many people want more opportunities professionally, but they don't realize that there has to be some effort that goes into it. Um, and that's what we're speaking about exactly. today. Your personal brand mm -hmm. is what allows for more opportunities. So we spoke about how we dress. What is another area of concern that you see? How we conduct ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes? Even in the business place. And I've seen an example. I use an example where I've seen the CEO of a company, not CEO, the chairman of a company went in and they wanted to send somebody away for training. And he went in very casual and just chat around with the staff running through. Yeah. And finally, they went to his manager and said, I want that person to mm -hmm. be sent off for training. 
and everybody was up in arms. Well, this person is young, they're He's doing right. the business and things. Mm -hmm. But what he was doing is to check to see how they interact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? And he was testing that. So, you know, some of these things we see abroad, we're doing them right here. Yeah. So, we must always be conscious of the message we're sending. Yeah. When we get to work, how do we work? Sometimes we go to work and even by what you do, hmm, some of us do enough to get by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't realize that, you know, we're sending the wrong message. We're developing the habit of being mediocre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, your branding is when you go to work, do more than you are paid for. Do more than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Because that's building yourself. You stand out. Yes? And if you... The problem... One of the biggest problems I find which really get to me is time. Or oh, this the belly is. Mm -hmm. So you can be late. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. But time. We got to take time seriously. If I have an appointment with you at 8 and I come at 8, I'm late. Mm -hmm. The appointment is for 8, so I'm supposed to be there for 8. Mm -hmm. If I come 5 minutes late, 10 minutes late, then it's sending the message, I really don't give two hoots yeah. about your time and you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? So we need to be conscious of time. We only have 86,400 seconds in the day. How do we <laughs> utilize it? Mm -hmm. right? In addition to looking at uh, the way we represent ourselves within the workplace, as I pointed out before, uh, people, there's a like a, you know, I love when we're covering, when, when the United States uh, election is being covered, there was this issue of likability that kept on coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at a qualified, and we won't get into the details of why Donald Trump won and Hillary Clinton lost, <laughs> because especially Americans mm -hmm. will, will, will have their own views. It's politics. But I thought in terms of looking at some of the fundamental issues, likability was an important element for yes. them. In other words, what draws you as, mm -hmm. when I turn on my, my television, what draws me to a person mm -hmm. or what doesn't draw me to a person? And those are important elements is, of yes. personal branding. How do we address those? What, while I think, I don't know if you can make yourself more likable, you can do to make yourself more likable. Well, as Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes? So the thing is, you have to evaluate yourself. What image do I want to see? What kind of person do I want to become? Yeah. Right? It's not about setting goal and I'm going to achieve it, but becoming the person who can achieve that goal. Yeah. Yes? So you're selling your personality to someone else. What image do I want to send? And start to become that person. You know, it's not living in somebody else's shoes, right? It's not imitating somebody. It's, you can look at somebody, I mean, I like how you dress, I like how you speak and so forth, and I can say, okay, take some cues from that, but not to become you. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. You have to become the best you that you can be. And we are all made unique, so it's becoming the best you you can be. But I need to look at the people and see what they are doing. And say, okay, how can I lift myself to that standard? Yeah. But you have to determine what is it that you want to be and start to act that part. What I also find helpful is sometimes you meet people that just naturally draw you in. Yes. They're great. They're very engaging. They're magnetic in their personality. Yes. But you know why? Well, I have a habit of analyzing why. Why am I drawn to this person? What skills do they possess? Mm -hmm. Public speaking and communication skills is one of them. Yes. Um, in a very competitive arena, some people love speaking very technical and professional. However, that's not necessarily the type of behavior that engages no. people. Mm -hmm. How important, and full disclaimer, I've done public speaking with Mr. Leckie before. Uh, I know this is crucial about connecting with people and using language that helps you to connect. Let's talk about that. Because it's a, communication is a contact sport. Yeah. So if you're not connecting, you're not communicating. Mm -hmm. The key thing to remember, it is not your audience. So they're speaking one-on-one -on -one out of 10,000. It's not your audience's responsibility to understand you. Mm -hmm. It's your responsibility to ensure that they understand. Yeah. Right? Because unless they understand, you're not communicating. Mm -hmm. So it's really how you present. And sometimes we think that using a lot of big words, mm -hmm. That's okay if you're speaking to somebody who understands yeah. those words. If you're yeah, speaking you to academics or yeah, yes. lit majors or English majors, yeah. fantastic. That's fine. Yeah. Are using technical jargon. Yeah. yeah. 
You know, use a KISS formula. Keep it simple. Stupid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but simpler words are the best words to communicate with. Yeah. Because you need to make sure that understanding has taken place. Yeah. And when you speak with people, the other thing is active listening. We do not listen. You see, you're drawn to people who listen to you. If, I, if you listen to me, then I feel that I can trust you. Mm -hmm. And you know the truth is, I trust you is a better compliment than I love you. You can always love the one you trust. You cannot always trust the one you love. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. So you build trust by listening. And active listening means empathic listening. When I'm listening to you, I'm not planning a response. Mm -hmm. I'm listening fully, mind and body, 100%. Listening to what you're saying, using my experience to understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. right? And that's what draws people. Because if somebody is a good listener. You want to talk to them. The problem we have a lot of time, for example, you go out, you meet professionals, then they come up to you and they start to tell you about themselves. Nobody really give a continental yeah. blast <laughs> about you, really, you know. Mm -hmm. What they're concerned about is how much you care about them, yeah. Yeah. right? So when you start to talk, if I'm listening to you, you tell me more. If I display an interest in you, you want to be around me, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If I'm telling you all about myself, well, Eventually, you just walk away. You'll bore, per, you'll yes. bore people to death. Right. Let me ask you this, Mr. Lecky. In terms of public speaking, there is a school of thought that, to an extent, uh, may be opposed to what you've presented. You find that there are people who would argue that in public speaking, Either you're speaking to one person or you're speaking to 10,000 people, as you've mentioned. A combination of different uses of language works best, as opposed to keeping it simple all the way through, based on the audience you're speaking with. You may have people in your audience who are educated, who are technical, who, are, um, who prefer being spoken to in simple language. So one can argue that it's a combination of, you know, big, small, mm -hmm. it's the effectiveness of how it's being used. Mm -hmm. How would you respond to that? Uh, the first thing is that if you're going to address an audience, mm -hmm. you need to know no. your audience. Mm -hmm. right? If you ask me to come and speak to a group, I'm going to ask you, what's the academic level that I'm dealing yeah. with, right? And different aspects. I need to know something about the audience. Even the um, generation I'm speaking to, if it's cross-generation learner. Mm -hmm. Because that allows me now to prepare my mind how I reach to them. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's learning to use language where nobody feel like you're speaking over their head, or they yeah. feel like you're speaking under them. To them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes? So it's a matter of how you present it, really, mm -hmm. because you want to ensure you reach everybody. Yeah. Yes, so it's communicating. If I use a technical term, I'm going to use it in three different ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm so that everybody understands. So you've actually helped to teach them in that exactly. process, but yeah. not in a way where they have to figure it out. That's or you're right. being condescending or what have you. That's right. So I love the concept of active listening is one that, that people oftentimes forget. And you called communication a contact sport um, in terms of being able to understand your role as the communicator in making sure your audience understands mm -hmm. you. One of the other areas I know you're very good at explaining is talking about how to stand out, even in how you speak. And this is, is fundamentally important when you talk about public speaking, because if you're at a workshop, there are five different speeches uh, or presentations that people will make. How do you make yourself stand out when you are the fourth one after lunch, <laughs> which is the most Difficult hour to work. Well, not necessarily. And I find that I love the after lunch thing, really, because that's what challenges you. Yeah. Basically, it's your presence. One of the things is that you have to make yourself be memorable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't use cliches. Mm -hmm. I just stay away from cliches. And people mm -hmm. love to use these cliches. You have, to be you have to be fresh. You have to be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really the key. I know you stand. When you get out there, your presence. Position. You, yes. I mean, do you slump over the... Huh? Present yourself. So people want to listen to you. And you eyeball your people. So each person in the audience feels that you're speaking directly to him or her. Mm -hmm. yes? mm -hmm. So you eyeball everybody. 
And people think you shouldn't look in the eyes. If you can't look in the eyes, look in the forehead. Yeah. People won't know the difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Just a few degrees up. That's right. But you eyeball, eyeball your people mm -hmm. and you speak. Mm -hmm. And you can feel the pulse of your audience. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to go to sleep, for example, then you can call, just call on them. Mm -hmm. you know, you engage, them. engage them. Engage mm them. -hmm. So it's really a matter of how you do it. And you do not stand there. One of the worst things is to stand there and just read in. From a podium. From a podium. Yeah. Lecturing, lecturing to the audience. Yes. Yeah. No. Adults learn because they want to. So mm. you have to engage them. And, and it's really what it comes down to. You just see your presence moving around. If we can change, somebody was watching this and saying, you know, I, I want to build a better brand for myself. Uh, you know, perhaps I just want to be taken more seriously at work, or I want my work to be more impactful to other people. I want people to seek me out for job opportunities, or I want to apply for a job and stand out as the number one candidate. What is one thing that they can do differently starting today? First thing I start with is make sure that you wear clothes that complement your body. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because people are going to look at you and form the opinion just by how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. Make sure that when you walk in, you walk with your head up. Mm -hmm. Yes? Start to become assertive. And probably the first thing to do is to start to think, what legacy do I want to leave? Mm -hmm. right? Because that will determine the, what you want, the message you want to send. What message do I want to leave? Am I... The way I'm living now, is that in alignment with that legacy? Yeah. Right? How do I want to be perceived? And so I, I think that's the first thing. Including that online about. profile. Including the online profile. Mm -hmm. Probably more important than that <laughs> online, online profile. profile. Yeah. On the online profile, you can show off the professional dress. Of course. Hopefully not posing in your bathroom mirror. No. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really a matter of how do you present yourself. Yeah. That's really what it comes down first thing. Because people are going to accept you for how you present. They're not going to say, show me your credentials mm -hmm. first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're going to accept you as how you present yourself. So one of the things we need to start to become is more assertive. I really wish and hope, and my dream when I go out every day and I present, is to start to see people becoming more assertive. We have too many brilliant minds mm -hmm. that are laying in dormant. Yeah. They, they take too much of a backseat. Too much of a backseat, yes. They've been crippled by fear, and yes. you're, you're right. And we don't know them or recognize them because we can't find them. We can't, exactly. Yeah, we can. I think the worst thing is when you have someone who is brilliant and, and well-read and is able to be able to, to express certain things, but they choose not to, and then they attempt to do so after the fact. Mm -hmm. There's really little to nothing that can be done <laughs> once don't, right. the ship yeah. has sailed and then you're coming with a bright idea afterwards. Right. And so we must take the opportunity to sell ourselves, yeah. accept speaking engagements. When you're in meetings, speak up. You must be civil, mm -hmm. but put the card on the table. Yes. We have to build our self-confidence. And it starts by how presenting ourselves, mm -hmm. yeah. right? being assertive, speaking up. Be civil about it. And for anybody who says, I just can't speak out in public, in any, uh, I can't present my work, I can't speak up at meetings. How can they help to develop these skills? Well, <laughs> you can take a public speaking course. <laughs> I won't tell you they, where to call. They but are available. Get, yes, I mean, they are available. Key, yeah. Yes. But that's a key thing. You see, the thing is when you mm -hmm. develop your skill as a public speaker, your confidence yeah. grows. Mm -hmm. And let me share something personal. In another life, way back when, I was one of those people who fear public speaking, who would rather die mm -hmm. than to speak publicly. So if you feel that way, you're among the majority. Mm -hmm. Approximately 70% of people would rather die mm -hmm. than to speak publicly. The thing is to confront that fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the best way is a public speaking course, which will help you to get out of it. But you need to confront that fear. If you don't want to take a public speaking course, well, start talking to your dog. You know, dogs are good listeners. <laughs> I, I do that regularly. <laughs> <laughs> but start somewhere. Because you can. All of us can. Yeah. I know I was one of those persons. Yeah. And I decide that I will have to change it. And your failures, even in public speaking, build part of your character. The great stories to give later on. Of course. Yes. 
Look, there's nothing to fear about fear itself. Mm -hmm. Failure is not the opposite of success. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want to succeed a lot, you've got to fail. fail. Huh? Yeah. If you never fall, you never know how to get up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? All right. Well, I think this has been a very inspirational segment, but a very important reminder to consider the messages that we're sending out to the public at all times. Mm -hmm. And if we are looking to develop our own personal brand, uh, you brought up quite a number of issues that we do have to start paying attention to. We appreciate you being here this morning. Thank you. And how do people get in touch with you? Institute of Professional Development. My cell number is 615-9466. And uh, you have a website as well. We have a website, okay. IPD. Where Berlin. you can be com. able to get some of these courses yes, as well. Right. You uh -huh. can call my office, you can um, email, text, whatever you use, we have it. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Lecky. Thank you. We're going to go ahead now and take that final break. And when we come back, we'll have our wrap up. So stay tuned.